Our guest this morning is James Fan, a musician who has played for us at Unity on many occasions and who is always appreciated not only for his talent, which is immense, but for his joie de vivre, his enthusiasm and joy and his obvious love of people. Welcome, James, and thank you for being with us this morning. You've had an interesting life. You told me you first began making music at a Catholic church in Vietnam when you were a child. Is that right? I was uh, writing my first song when I didn't know anything about music. <laughs> uh, I was uh, 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, uh, at, the, uh, at that moment, my mom was in jail. Uh, my oldest brother was in jail because we were uh, trying to escape out from Vietnam and, and we were captured. And... Uh, uh, me, my uh, older sister, she was uh, 16, my younger brother was uh, 12, and one older brother, four of us, uh, without mother, without father at the time. So uh, there's so many occasions that after school, uh, we, we went home and we didn't have food to eat. Mm. So... Uh, and we were crying, and I look at my younger brother, and at that moment, there's some music in my mind. Let's right. go to sleep, forget about the hunger. Yeah. Did you have any um, actual professional training as a pianist, or is that something you just picked up on your own? Uh, I never have any training professionally. Um, I love music because at, in Vietnam at that time, we have only one hour of music from the radio, uh, yeah, and w at the time now it's it, it totally f different. But at the time, it really difficult to mm -hmm. even listen to you. You're not allowed to listen to a foreign radio station, mm -hmm. BBC or whatever. Because at the time, it, like uh, we listen to BBC to know which boat get to the other side. Ah, we, yeah, yes. so the BBC would you know like would tell it you know today they would pick up a boat with the. Uh, what do we call it? the license plate or whatever? So, so we all listen to it so to to find out uh, if our relative or the people that we know can escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, music was a comfort to you. Yes. Did you actually sing in the church? I joined the choir because mm -hmm. I want to play the piano, and we didn't have the piano at you know to practice. Right. So, the way for me to to play the piano was to join the choir, and that was unusual because. Uh, Vietnam is not a Christian country, uh, so I think some like seven percent of the population was. It, did that make any difference in the way you were treated in in that political situation at all? I was a kid, so I so I didn't know much about what was happening. Right. But uh, it's simple, you know. I go to church. I was in the choir, mm -hmm. and I was uh, an altar boy. So church is, you know, my 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 fun time. Ah. Yeah, my fun time. And I learned basic uh, uh, knowledge about music from the church because there were the two guys from, from other church go there and uh, direct the choir. And before we practice, they teach us a little bit about, you know, A, B, you know, the notation yes. and how you, should you sing. And that's where I learned music. Wonderful. Yeah. So you were actually imprisoned yourself as a child for a little bit, yes? <laughs> a short time, yes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, we would uh, we tried to escape. We got on the boat, mm -hmm. and my mom uh, and uh, four of us, but my one of my older brother, he get lost. <laughs> oh dear. So, um, and uh, uh, we were captured, the whole family, and uh, everybody was in jail but we because we were little kids so uh, we were out after a few days but my mom and my oldest brother they were adults so they were in jail for for three years mm. yeah but you eventually all did escape but not at the same time part of you you came with your mom first yeah uh, my 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 dad and my uh, my sister uh, uh, go first at mm -hmm. the time we didn't have money to put everybody on, on the same trip so it costs money. Yes, of course. Yeah, and uh, so my dad and my my sister they uh, they escaped in 1980. 
Yeah, and then they um, Canada opened their arm to accept them. Right. And then um, we we tried to escape a year after that, but we failed. And um, and because my mom was in jail, so we have to wait until my mom get out. And when my mom's uh, out, we um, my my dad is already in Canada, and mm-hmm. he uh, got a, a job to secure to sponsor the rest of the family. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're all here. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, and, and we in Canada, we, we heard stories about the boat people and how many, many people perished. And you were actually witness to that. Do you care to share a little bit about your actual escape? Um, uh, at the time, you know, I everybody uh, just wanted to be out of Vietnam at the time. That's why I'm so happy now when I go back there. I say it's, it's so much different from what I remember. Um, as, uh, and you escape, so you you have to try to do everything in secret. Mm-hmm. So I remember that our trip, we we were uh, we make it like a, a wedding. Mm. Yeah, so everybody dressed like uh, you know you go to the wedding. And we We're get going the, to the escape today. Yeah. Yes. So, so we, so the 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 local police will not pay attention much to us because if we go to wedding, so it it means that we're not going to escape, right? Ah, oh, yeah. so it's a so we a, set up a like hiding. a wedding. Yeah. Right. So, um, um, uh, we was in the big uh, bus, and I don't remember how long it take, but uh, uh, I remember it's it's at, at night time. And we have to go to a, a meeting place where, like, we don't want any government official to know. So everything has to be so very quiet. Right. Yeah. And I remember that night, is that the best sleep of my life because, you know, like, rock everywhere, big rock. But then I was so tired. And I remember my, 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 my oldest brother was carrying me for a little bit. Mm. And we have to go to a little, I don't think it's called an island, but from, from that little island, uh, we, have, we got to a little um, boat, and the, the little boat would carry us to the big one. The big one carry right. a few hundred of us. Right. Yeah. And uh, after about an hour of, you know, in the water, and I st- start, you know, like shooting. Oh. And after that, the first time, I look up and see, you know, like bullets and go and boom, 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 boom. And and we were captured. Oh, yeah. Dear. Yeah. You know, thank you for sharing that because, you know, we heard news stories and so forth. But, but to actually put a face to a person who's had that experience, I think is going to help us all understand a little more, have a little more sympathy, empathy. <laughs> Um, so thank you for being vulnerable. But you did get to Canada eventually. Yes. And you arrived in Canada in what year? 1985. 1985. Yeah. So you've been... How how has it been adapting to a new culture? Was that difficult? You had no English when you came? Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult and even until today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still not like completely feel 100% like... Uh, because uh, I don't know... Uh, Growing up in a different country and yeah. it's so many things going on, and it's 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 not it's not easy and and, and maybe I'm kind of a shy guy I don't know but uh, even until today I still feel that I'm not completely here I still miss Vietnam a lot mm-hmm. I miss the food I miss my friends and when I'm there I feel like really me. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I went back to Vietnam a few times, and even I stay a year there, and uh, I just, you know, just feel so so free. And uh, compare with what I, I remember when I was a little kid, and and the difficult at the time. Now, you know, I think it, Vietnam is not is not perfect. It's no, yeah, no. it's not. Un, it's still under communism, but they 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 learn, they change. Uh, they got to it's open better. up, yeah, the, yeah, their business with other countries. So they they a much better place now mm-hmm. for a lot of people, but they, but there's still a lot of problems that they need to. Uh, right. Yeah, but for you to maintain your culture, are you able to balance that and still have a, a Vietnamese community here and still do your festivals and your traditional things? And are there enough people here that you f- you you feel comfortable here as as well as? In Canadian culture, 
I I um I love Canada. Okay. <laughs> I'm so proud of being Canada, Canadian. And the the culture is I used to live in Vancouver and there's a, a bigger Vietnamese uh, community there. Mm-hmm. In in here in Nanaimo there's like close to none. There's, I don't see anything going on. But I still have Vietnamese friends and we mm-hmm. we get together and do karaoke and and we celebrate the, the Lunar New Year, mm-hmm. um, but it's not enough. <laughs> when when is the Lunar New Year? That not the same date every year. No, it's, it's the same Lunar New Year day every year, but not the same day in our calendar. Yeah, yeah. right. But it's, but it's in January. Around sometime in January, sometime in February. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, let us know. Maybe we can <laughs> yeah, do something year. special. Um, so. Have you actually experienced, directly experienced any racism here in Canada? Or indirectly, maybe? Indirectly. Yeah. I, um, I, I saw a lot of, you know, like, dirty look, like, you know, like, you really? know, and, and uh, it, it, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a songwriter. I, and so I, I, I guess I, I um, experienced thing maybe to, uh, mm, I don't know how to explain it, but you know, like I, I can recognize. I can when racism or something happen, you know. You just sense I it. I just feel it. I feel. Yeah. It. I yeah. feel it. So that so a lot of time it, it make me feel sad, mm-hmm. but I'm get over it because I use music at my escape. You know, when I whenever I feel that, you know, I should be treated equally. Yes, of course. Instead of of. of uh, and then, but then I know the world is not perfect, and there's there's still a lot of a problem in the world right now with the wars going on mm-hmm. and racism. Uh, I think racism is 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 in a lot of different forms. It's not necessarily between different colors of the skin, right. but racism. even in the family, we can see you know like a mother or father maybe they treat some kids you know like better than the other mm. so racism is everywhere and that's one of the things that I want to to use my song my music whatever I do to to, to fix the world in a way that better for everybody exactly and let me on behalf of all Canadians apologize for that and thank you because education is it's what's going to change that yes. so when people get to know you and hear your story um, every little bit helps now, one would think that experiences such as you have had might cause a person to lose faith. Um, but I, I watch you when you're visiting us at, at Unity and playing for us, and I watch you when you play, and I watch you when you're listening to the talks and, and the meditations. And I sense an openness, I, a, a real deep spirituality in you. I, I don't know whether you still honor your Catholic customs. I suspect perhaps you do on some level. But I also see how open you are to to listen and explore new things. Um, would you care to talk about what your sense of spirituality feels like at this point? I still, I go to the church and I join a choir, a Catholic uh, hmm. church here. And uh, in my life, I spent so many years in the cho- you know in the choir from Vietnam and then and then in in Vancouver where I spent a lot of my time. I believe that uh, through music, through music, I can make the world a better place. Uh, uh, and I already use music to help you know some of the people that I know to to feel better about life. So spirituality, I think, I think to me, God is. Uh, evolving mm-hmm. like I remember in Vietnam there, there were times when you know like people if they associate with communists like they're not allowed to take the right. Yeah. right so and then it thing changed so I think God is you know God is not changing but the, the law or whatever you know like people make up things and it will eventually have to change to make the world a better place so so uh, I think in in very deep at my heart, I believe a good day. I believe things will get better mm. for everybody. Uh, look at what's happening now in 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 uh, in uh, Gaza, mm-hmm. and what I've been through. I look at the kids and look at and see. Oh God, that should not happen. That should not. 
never happened, especially those little children. Yeah. Thought, oh my goodness. Yeah. It just. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in unity, we like to think that we are all some part of, of God, that God is actually expressing on earth as us. So that evolution is happening as more and more of us wake up and realize that we're all one and we just can't do that anymore. But I, but I had the thought that a person who's gone through the kind of experiences you have, some people may, like either you become very bitter or you transcend that and embrace it and allow that to lift you up and, and help you grow. I suspect that's you. Um, but I'm sure you know people who have been through that experience who are very bitter in life. Yeah, I um, I do, you know, sometimes I do bitter too. Yeah. <laughs> to, to people who don't understand what I'm doing. And even if I try to explain, you know, all I want is a better world for everybody. But, you know, it, it, the world is it's queer in a way, you know, like, and whenever I'm in deep trouble or sadness, and I look, oh, look at Jesus, you know, he, all his in, intention was doing good for the world, and look what they did to him, they hang him yeah. up. So whenever, you know, things happen, you know, like, it, it, not a nice way to me, say, look at that, look at that. And I'm, I'm so lucky that uh, my work, I see a lot of people that, um, the circumstance, their life is so. Um, uh, what what should I say? It it, it down here challenging. It, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's, and I look at them and say, "Geez, you're still lucky than million of people out there. Billion of people out there. Like like even, uh, I remember when when I was a kid and there were times we didn't have food, right? Uh, and and look at the world right now." Every single day, every single moment, there's still a lot of us, a lot of people in the world still worry about what are they going to eat? <laughs> and a lot of them don't even have a, a roof over their head. Yes. Yeah. You know, like I saw with my own eye in Vietnam, even today, you know, people just have a few cotton boxes and they just cover them, you know. So, and and then they say, see, if you think you you." You're not so like you. You so unlucky. Look at these people. Look around. Look around. First and, world problems, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know. And you say, okay, you're not bad. You yeah. And then I appreciate that this is the gift that God gave to me. I can sing, <laughs> and I can I can use music to to reach people whenever I'm in front of a people and try to do you know like singing my heart out, and I feel good because yeah. I give. I'm sharing with them, you know, like and the the gift of music, and and that's just wonderful. It, it is, yeah, the feeling of just sharing and make people feel good. It's it's wonderful. People, someone came to me after service the last time you were here, and said, you know, I'm, I've been in unity for 35 years, and I know we've all was taught that God is present in each and every one of us, that we're all divine. And when I look at him, I finally get it. So thank you for sharing your divinity with us, your joy and your compassion. And uh, thank you for being with me this morning. And we look forward to having you back to sing for us soon. For sure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, James. James Fan.